After a very mild fall season, we have finally felt some more frequent tastes of winter towards the tail end of November and the start of December thus far. Meteorologist John Birchfield here with this week's edition of the Climate Friday newsletter. We're going to be talking about winter striking early, not just here at home, but for a good portion of the country from extreme cold to lake effect snow. We have felt quite the gambit of winter weather this week and likely to continue into the coming weeks. So we're going to break down the numbers behind how much snow folks um, in New England have seen and even out in eastern Ohio as a result of that lake effect and also our temperatures here at home and what you can expect going forward into the middle of December. December. If you're not already subscribed to the Climate Friday newsletter, head to WTOL.com slash email for new content each and every Friday straight to your inbox. Let's start things off by talking about the lake effect snow machine that has certainly been turned on into full gear over the last week to week and a half. This map shows you snow depth across the Great Lakes region. Those lighter blue colors indicate lighter amounts of snow and the purple colors you can see on the color key indicate one to even two feet of snow accumulation and that snow depth has really piled up. You'll notice mainly downwind of the Great Lakes. There's Lake Michigan and just to the east of Lake Michigan, some heavy snowfall also coming in off eastern Lake Erie and Lake Ontario over the last week to week and a half. Persistent bands of lake effect snow have resulted from the colder air filtering in over the relatively mild Great Lakes. Widespread snow amounts in western Michigan have amounted to three to six inches of snow depth, and that is just what's remaining on the ground. Higher amounts have occurred in some of those snow squalls coming in off of Lake Michigan, Benton Harbor back towards Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids. Some of those cities in West Michigan do frequently see lake effect snow. Now, the more impressive snowfall totals have actually occurred in our Lake Erie, just not so much on the western side, more along the lines of eastern Lake Erie. Whenever the wind blows right along the fetch of Lake Erie, you get some substantial snowfall totals, and some of those impressive amounts to the east of Cleveland have amounted to one to two feet up to Towards Erie, Pennsylvania and Buffalo, New York. There have been some incredible snowfall totals impacting the Buffalo Bills game as well. And coming in off Lake Ontario, some incredible snowfall amounts in the ballpark of two to three feet. And that is just the snow depth with isolated amounts that were higher. And some of that has been compacted or pressed down or melted away. Watertown is one city that really sees some heavy frequent lake effect snow, not only off Lake Ontario, but sometimes we get what is known as a lake connection or when that wind blows from Lake Erie to Lake Ontario and you get the feedback from both of those Great Lakes amounting to some of those higher totals shown in pink there on the snowfall map. So here's some of the official snowfall reports from that New York Lake Effect snow event. There at the bottom you'll see Bill's Stadium in Orchard Park received 27.6 inches of snowfall certainly making for a snow globe game versus the 49ers. Copenhagen takes the cake with 65 inches of snow accumulation. Watertown, which I mentioned on the map, that is a town that is very familiar with lake effect snow. Dunkirk as well gets frequent lake effect. Orchard Park and the city of Buffalo itself still over a foot of snow accumulation. The city of Buffalo where that weather observation site not quite as prime of a lake effect destination as say Orchard Park. Now in the Buckeye State lake effect snow has also impacted areas near and east of Cleveland. Saybrook with over five feet of snowfall 61.7 inches of accumulation. Geneva with 49.0 over four feet of accumulation. North Madison 45 inches. Painesville over three feet and Concord just shy of three feet. And there's going to be more to come with the intrusion of some Arctic air in the wake of a cold front. We expect lake effect snow through the start of the weekend, at least with that cold air coming in off the Great Lakes. So when do we normally see some snowfall? Well, Toledo has finally gotten a little bit of a taste of winter after relatively devoid snowfall the last few Decembers. We finally have picked up a little bit. Now this is our normal winter snowfall during December. We typically average a little over a half a foot of snowfall. So while we do sometimes see that Christmas snow, it may not be quite as common as you think. Coming up in future editions of the Climate Friday newsletter, we are going to talk those white Christmas chances. January is the snowiest month of the calendar year with an average snowfall a little over one foot. And into February, we typically average 10.3 inches of accumulation, making it the second snowiest month of the year. What about last year? How did snowfall fare from the winter of 23 to 24? December was tied for the least snowy on record with just a trace of accumulation. In other words, not even enough to measure with a ruler. 
just a few flakes. January did finally try to eat away at that deficit with eight inches of snow. It was still a below average January. Keep in mind and then February another record setting month with only half an inch of snow accumulation. Now normally we can expect some colder temperatures and more frequent snowfall as we round the corner towards the official start of winter in a couple of weeks and I want to talk about some December extremes. In other words, those outliers on both ends of the spectrum. The warmest December on record and this is looking at daytime high temperatures was in 1889 with an average high of 49.3. Now, of course, the weather observation equipment back then might not have been quite as precise, but that still gives you an idea of just how exceptionally warm that December was. And it's a reminder that even with climate change, we still did see historically warm weather back before the um, climate change really started to exacerbate those emissions totals. And we still do see extreme cold even today. And that goes to show 1989. We saw an average low temperature of eight degrees, making it the coldest December on record, at least in terms of those overnight lows. The wettest was in 1967 with almost seven inches of liquid precipitation, and that includes both rainfall and melted snow. Certainly quite a bit of moisture in the atmosphere and in the soil from that December. The snowiest 1951 with over two feet of snow accumulation, 25.5 inches during the month of December alone. So we're not officially in the start of winter yet, even though meteorological winter did start on the first day of December. Overall, it's been an exceptionally mild fall and the month of November was three and a half degrees above average. Even though we finally did get a little chill and taste of winter later on in the month, it really did not make up for that ground that started off with such a mild month. If you're watching this video on Friday, that means we have seen our ninth consecutive day that was colder than average. So despite the relatively mild November, the overall streak of days has pointed in the other direction with that pendulum swinging towards colder than normal days. And we have logged nine consecutive colder than average days, but that streak is likely to end towards the tail end of the weekend as we do have some warmer weather in that WTOL 11 weather forecast. Over the month of November, we did see quite the ups and downs in the extremes in the temperature department. The coldest day of the month was 20 degrees, and that was the very last day of November. Subsequently, we have dropped below 20 in December so far. The warmest day of November, of course, not surprisingly, was early on in the month, November 5th, 76 degrees, providing a little late taste of summer. And it goes to show that November is a month of change, but so is December. As of Friday, our normal daytime high temperature is down to 42 degrees. Of course, we've been so cold lately, we really haven't even had too many 40s to speak of. By the end of December, our normal daytime high drops down to 36. So that's what you can expect going towards the Christmas holiday and New Year's as well. And the morning low, our normal morning low is now down to 28 degrees. And that number is dropping in a hurry by the end of December going to be down to 23 as we're just a couple weeks away from the official start of winter. You felt that frigid cold Thursday into early Friday with that dose of Canadian Arctic air, but it is going to be very short lived, at least this time around. Those frigid temperatures move off towards New England and overall the long range outlook actually is trending in a slightly milder direction. Of course, mild is relative this time of year, but I do expect above average temperatures. Those orange and red colors over the Great Lakes region extending back towards the Great Plains and also up towards New England. That indicates temperatures that are going to be above average. Now in the 10 day forecast, you will see a couple of days near or above 50 degrees, and that is a sign that this little taste of winter is indeed short lived. Now it does seem like we are finally due for some wintry weather this season, and you'll want to subscribe to that Climate Friday newsletters. We share the latest with you, and as I mentioned, we're going to preview those white Christmas chances in the coming weeks. Stay tuned and be sure to check that free WTOL 11 weather app and subscribe at WTOL.com email. I'll see you next week.